and welcome. Today, we discuss the fascinating world of ecology as we explore its fundamental elements. Our discussion will revolve around ecology, the precise definition of an ecosystem, and the various components that constitute such ecosystems. Let's start this enlightening journey. Let us understand the concept of ecology. The word ecology comes from the Greek words, oikos, meaning house or place where one lives, and logos, meaning study of. So, it can be summarized as the study of the house in which we live. Ecology can be defined more specifically as the study of the interactions between organisms and the non-living components of their environment. Ecology is a discipline of science, of the study, of the relationships between living organisms and their environment. Ecology explores the intricate connections between plants, animals, and their physical surroundings, including soil, water, and climate. Living organisms and their non-living environment are inseparably interrelated and interact with each other. Any unit that includes all the organisms in a given area interacting with the physical environment within the system is an ecological system or ecosystem. Ecosystems can be of many sizes and complexities ranging from small ponds, forests, and grasslands to vast oceans and entire biomes. Examples of some ecosystems are pond ecosystems, grassland ecosystems, forest ecosystems, desert ecosystems, and so on. Biosphere, the giant ecosystem. As I have mentioned, Ecosystems can be of many sizes and complexities, ranging from small ponds, forests, and grasslands to vast oceans and entire biomes. The biosphere is the largest ecosystem. It is the global sum of all ecosystems on Earth. It includes the parts of the planet where life exists, extending from the deepest ocean to the highest mountain peaks and from the atmosphere to the depths of the Earth's crust. Now, let us understand the components of the ecosystem. An ecosystem is composed of two main components, biotic component and abiotic component. These components interact and influence each other to create a functioning ecological system. The biotic component comprises of all living organisms present in the ecosystem. The abiotic component is the non-living elements of an ecosystem. These factors play a crucial role in shaping the environment and influencing the distribution and abundance of biotic components. Now, we will discuss both these components in detail. Biotic or living components of an ecosystem comprised of all living organisms present in the ecosystem. They can be broadly categorized as producers and consumers. There are two basic types of consumers. Macro-consumers and micro-consumers. First, we will discuss about producer. Producer Producers are also known as autotrophs. Auto means self, and troph means nutrition. These organisms are capable of producing their own food using sunlight through the process of photosynthesis. They convert solar energy into chemical energy, which serves as a basis for the entire food chain. Examples include green plants, algae, and some bacteria. 
These are called photoautotrophs because they need sunlight. Photo means light. In this photochemical reaction, carbon dioxide and water vapor react in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll to produce glucose and oxygen. So, there are two types of autotrophs. Photoautotrophs and chemoautotrophs. Photoautotrophs are autotrophic organisms that use sunlight as their primary source of energy to synthesize organic compounds such as glucose through the process of photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, these organisms capture light energy using specialized pigments called chlorophyll and convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. Chemoautotrophs derive their energy from inorganic chemical reactions instead of sunlight. Chemo means chemical, auto means self, and troph means nourishment. Now, we will discuss another biotic component, the consumers. Consumer Consumers are also known as heterotrophs. Hetero meaning other. Heterotroph means other nourishment. Heterotrophs or consumers cannot produce their own food. They rely on consuming other organisms for their energy. There are two types of consumers. Macroconsumers and microconsumers. Macroconsumers Macroconsumers are also known as phagotrophs. Phago means to eat. They eat or ingest other organisms. If they are plant eaters, they are called herbivores. Flesh eaters are called carnivores. Consumers are further classified into primary consumers or herbivores. Secondary consumers, the carnivores that feed on herbivores. Tertiary consumers, carnivores that feed on secondary carnivores. And omnivores that consume both plants and animals. Herbivores may be insects, zooplankton, or animals like deer, cattle, elephants, etc. Carnivores consume flesh and usually prey on herbivores and other carnivores. They are animals like tigers, lions, etc. They can be classified as carnivore order 1, carnivore order 2, and so on based on their feeding habits. Microconsumers Microconsumers or sapratrophs are popularly known as decomposers. Sapro means to decompose. The dead bodies of producers and consumers are the food for the microorganisms. They decompose or break down dead organic matter and waste materials. Because of the decomposition, the essential nutrients return to the soil. This breakdown facilitates nutrient recycling, making essential elements available for uptake by plants and other organisms in the ecosystem. Detrivers Detrivers are organisms that feed on dead and decaying organic matter. Detrivers are larger than microconsumers and can be found at different trophic levels in the food chain. Examples Earthworms, wood lice, dung beetles, some insects, and larvae.
Abiotic components are the non-living elements of an ecosystem. These factors play an important role in shaping the environment. They influence the distribution and abundance of biotic components. Some key abiotic components are sunlight, temperature, water, soil, air, nutrients, and geology and topography. For instance, in arid regions such as deserts, there is limited vegetation and only specific organisms can survive. Organisms adapt to different climates in various ways. For example, in cold regions, animals have thick fur or feathers to keep them warm, while some animals hibernate during the winter months. In hot and dry regions, animals have adaptations that help them conserve water, such as the ability to store water in their bodies or the ability to go without water for long periods. The interactions and interdependencies between biotic and abiotic components create the intricate and balanced systems that we call ecosystems. Any changes or disturbances to one component can have cascading effects on the entire ecosystem. So, what we learned from this episode? By now, you should be able to define ecosystem, explain the components of ecosystem, describe the categories of biotic components, explain the role of saprotrophs in ecosystem and name some of the detrivers. The classification of components and subcomponents of the ecosystem can be represented like this. Biotic or living and abiotic or non-living. Biotic components have two subcomponents, producer and consumer. The producer or autotroph may be photoautotroph or chemoautotroph. Two components of consumers are macroconsumer and microconsumer. Macroconsumers are classified into primary, secondary, tertiary consumers and omnivores. The dead organic matters are the food for the detrivers. The abiotic factors are sunlight, temperature, water, air, nutrients, geology, and topology. All these components constitute the functional unit of an ecosystem. Our next video is about the food chain and the food web in an ecosystem. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.